Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video we're going to try and do an actuarial prediction for the Formula 1 results this season. Now when it comes to actuarial models, you always want to apply actuarial judgment, which means knowing when to use what model and being aware of the weaknesses of every model. So for example, in financial models, actuaries are well aware that Gaussian assumptions are favored over more realistic leptocurtic ones in order to, that the model is more tractable. And what this results in, or the weakness of financial models, is that they do tend to underestimate risk. So when it comes to sports models, which is what we want to do with regards to Formula One, we are aware that there's lots and lots of data. I mean, especially with Formula One, there's preseason testing, there's, there's a million various data points that you can go into. But what you want to know is that the most relevant is the past results, especially when the regulations haven't really changed that much. So you want to basically base your model on last year's results and then make a bit of a qualitative adjustment or an expert opinion to just tweak a little bit of the results. Talking about tweaking, if we had to look at the past results, we do want to make a few adjustments. For example, you'll see um, these adjusted results. They have uh, no Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg was a reserve driver who came in because some of the drivers got COVID. And also I took away Russell's points because he drove for Mercedes when Hamilton had COVID. And so he was scoring points for Mercedes, which isn't a fair reflection on the Williams team where he spent most of the season. Also for 2021, we do want to have some considerations. For example, uh, some drivers have changed teams. There are some new drivers and various teams have changed their engine. And also Racing Point has now become Aston Martin and Renault has become Alpine or Alpine. With that said, here is the actuarial model for the Formula One 2021 results. And as you can see, we want to avoid certainty statements. You know, we don't want to say, oh, Mercedes are guaranteed to come first. Instead, we want to say that there's a high probability that they're going to come first. You know, anything can happen in these seasons. So there is still a low possibility that they don't come first, although it's highly unlikely that they'll fall lower than second. Red Bull, I mean, there is always the possibility that they could win, uh, but they're most likely going to come second. There could be some issues with Honda, or they could just be unlucky, and so we could see them dip into third. Um, and we could even see McLaren sneak into that second place, because remember, McLaren are now getting the Mercedes engine, and they've got Ricardo, so there's, there's some high possibilities that they might do the best of all the teams in what I call the uncertainty zone. This is McLaren, Aston Martin, Alpine, Ferrari, and Alfa Tori. I think all of these teams are going to be battling each other, and this is where a lot of the excitement in Formula One is going to be. Also, a lot of awesome team rivalries uh, between uh, the two drivers in each of these teams. So this is the exciting part to watch from yeah, McLaren all the way to Alfa Tori. And you can see I've represented that in the model by saying, you know, there's no high chance that any one of these teams are going to have any certain position. Rather, there's a medium chance that they might come across a, a variety with maybe a little low possibility that they might be you know, a little bit high or a little bit lower. Then towards the end of the grid, it is a little bit more predictable where we're expecting Alfa Romeo and to be followed by Haas and then Williams to continue, um, you know, staying at the back. However, Haas, through preseason testing, and if you've been looking at them, they've got two brand new drivers. We could see Williams um, overtake them or they could be saying all of this to try to lower expectations and we might see them you know take eighth place away from from alpha so a little bit of a, a battle towards the end of the grid um but yeah there's essentially three fields of formula one there's the top tier with mercedes and red bull where mclaren might be getting in you then have the big uncertainty zone or the big mid pack mclaren aston martin alpine ferrari alpha tori and then you have alpha haas and williams at the kind of like the third rate class for for formula one so this is what an actuarial model would look like for a sport like formula one before the season has started what you don't want to do but we're going to do it anyway is try and be superiorly accurate by making crazy predictions as in trying to rank exactly where each of these drives are going to come and that's what we we're doing this for fun so an actuary wouldn't put a, a list like this but i thought for to make the video a little bit fun and to to see how well we do um we've created the following uh, table uh, and we've got yes 
Hamilton most likely to win, then we've got Verstappen in second, Bottas in third, then Perez, and then you can see from fifth to 14th, again, it's this huge uncertainty zone where we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, um, Yuki Shinoda could come fifth and Ricardo could come 14th. Anything might happen, but we're going with Ricardo fifth, Alonso sixth, Leclerc seventh, Vettel eighth, Norris ninth, Sainz tenth, Gasly eleventh, Stroll twelfth, Ocon 13th and Shinoda 14th and then I think we're going to see Raikkonen, Giovinazzi and I'm expecting Russell to to beat the Haas drivers of Schumacher and Mazepin and then you yeah, expecting Latifi to come in last and then what you really don't want to do as an actuary is make <laughs> even more uh, you know point predictions but again for the fun of this video we're going to do that so like I say, no actually would do this in, in a commercial setting, but because it's sports, we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. So yeah, the first point predictions is that, you know, Perez is going to win the first race, and I think that could introduce a lot of drama and a lot of excitement into the season. I think Vettel will maybe get a podium, um, maybe under some extreme conditions, but it will be something that I think the fans would just love to see. Also think we're going to see Williams ending their point drought, um, you know, with them sneaking in a point. And yeah, and I think Russell's going to be the driver who does that. Um, Ricardo, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but there's no way to doubt that he is quick. He is lucky and we might see him win a race for McLaren. He's really got a good package uh, this year. Then I think Ocon is going to get fired at the end of the season just because in comparison to Alonso, he's not going to do that well. And we might even see Gasly taking his place because he's also French and the Alpine group um, has got a lot of French uh, connections. Then I, I don't think this is too much of a, of a tall prediction to make, but there's going to be drama at Ferrari. Either some engineer or the head of the department is going to get fired or they're going to be caught with the regulators for cheating. I don't know, but there's just going to be some sort of drama happening at Ferrari uh, this year. I think Alonso will get only two podiums. Um, where they will be on the podium it might be a second, might be a third. I don't really think he's going to win a race, but we will see. But I do think he will be visiting the podium more than once. Norris, I think, will out-qualify Ricardo. So at the end of the season, when you look at the qualifying tallies, I think Norris on lap for lap is, you know, quicker. However, Ricardo's just got a little bit more of a of a wise head and will keep out of trouble and will make sure that the car the car crosses the finishing line. So we'll outscore Norris, I think, at the end of the day. But in qualifying, we'll see Norris um, beating Ricardo. And then the last one is probably the, the most boring or the most predictable of them all is that Hamilton will complain over the team radio, uh, most likely about his tires. And it's just something that, that the world champion um, tends to do every single season. So yes, these are my 2021 uh, predicted results. Like I say, the actuarial model is more the one where you build in uncertainty, you have in your confidence intervals, and you know you allow for a lot of wiggle room. Um, but hey, if you wanted to have you know from first to to twentieth, this is what I think is going to happen. Of course, the probability of this actually happening, you know, to a T is is incredibly small. Um, but yeah, those are my predictions. Let me know if you've got any of your own in the comment section below. Keep well. Cheers.